If you got a paper, the cartoon on the side is for those of you that like to color while I, while I preach. Uh, if you color it pretty and hand it in later, I'll give you a gold star when you get to heaven. I'll see you up there. Um, at my age, I, I usually keep pretty good records of what I've preached in the past and what I haven't. And I know that on one night I gave you just verse 1 as a prayer prompter. So tonight I'm going to be bold and take you all the way to verse 5, okay? But uh, I hope this is a help to you. Uh, <coughs> you have to write small, sorry about that, uh, to get all these uh, words in there. I didn't, didn't make this as big as I could have because I had to add the cartoon, so a little bit shorter lines tonight. Psalm 103, let me read the first five verses. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle." Similar to that passage in Isaiah 41. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your love for us. Lord, we do want to bless your name, and we do want to thank you so much for all that you give to us each and every day. We're thankful for the ministry of your Holy Spirit in our life as we look to your word, and he guides us and helps us understand truths. And Lord, we just pray that tonight what we learn will be helpful. It'll be the kind of thing we can share with others, and it'll be the kind of things that will cause us to go home and when our head hits the pillow, say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for us, all that you've done in the past, all that you will do in the future, and especially all that you're doing today in each of our lives. So thank you for the chance to meet. Bless these people in a rich way. Help this preacher. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay? Well, let's start out with three major reasons to bless the Lord. First of all, bless Him for saving our soul. I think of the song, Oh, Happy Day, Oh, Happy Day. Uh, now, some of you folks in here were raised in a Christian home, and you were probably saved as a young child, and you don't remember that occasion. Uh, I, great. I think it's better to get saved when you're young. That saves you from a lot of foolishness. But probably a third or a half of you were saved later in life. And if that be the case, you probably remember the day that you realized that you were on your way to hell without Christ. And you realize that the way you were going had to change. And the Lord reached down and said, look, I'd like to adopt you. Will you let me adopt you? And you said yes. You said yes to Jesus. You were born again the Bible way. You know, the more we witness, the more I realize that there's, there's a Methodist way to get saved, and there's a, there's a Lutheran way to get saved, and a Catholic way to get saved. And then there's the Bible way to get saved. And the Bible way is the best way. But almost every religion out there has got their own ideas about what is what salvation is. But it's the Bible truth, John 3, you must be born again. And those things you used to do, you shouldn't be doing them anymore. And one of the biggest frustrations we have as preachers is there's a lot of people who say they're Christian, but they sure don't live like it. They don't live like it. They don't look like it. They don't behave like it. But I am so thankful for the ones that do love the Lord and the ones that can say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, for saving us and for rescuing us from that broad road that leads to destruction. Remember, if you're saved, you're barely saved. Less than 5% of the people in the country live in the U.S. Five, less than 5% of the people in the world live in the United States. You could have been born in China or South America, or I better be careful with South America because Losi's here. You, you could be born... <laughs> You could, you could have been born in India. You could have been, you know, of all the places. And you, you could have been born into an Eskimo family. You could have, you could have been born into an Aborigine family in India, family from India or China. Or, but God put you here. And you, you ought to be thankful for the Lord allowing you to be born in America so that you could hear the truth and trust Christ as your Savior. Because those Hindus and those Muslims and those, and those, uh, um, uh, all those other different religions and cultures out there, they don't worship the Jesus of the Bible. And uh, you can be thankful for that. So we can bless him for saving our soul, okay? 
If it weren't for that, we'd be in trouble. Secondly, we can bless Him for the blessings within me. Verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I was praying with Larry, and I was telling in my prayer about how we need to be thankful for every breath with all that Canadian smoke in the air. Uh, I mean, I'm thankful that I can breathe. I've had a couple times where I've been choking and I couldn't breathe. That's kind of scary. Some of you have been there where you, you ran out of breath. And uh, boy, I tell you, every breath is important to God, and He's just generous. Uh, I don't know how many times I inhale every day, probably several thousand and uh, maybe after every breath, I should say thank you for that breath. Thank you for that breath. Uh, but he does. He gives us. He gives us so much. The air we breathe, every heartbeat. You know that poor firefighter from here on. He didn't. He didn't think he was going to be gone this week. But he's gone. And our hearts are still beating. And his life is over. I hope he's saved. I hope he's got a religious, spiritual, Bible kind of background. I don't know. I don't even know who it is. But I know his family is grieving because he's probably got a mom and a dad and a brother and sister. Probably got a wife. Probably has some kids. They're having a rough week. Praise the Lord for every breath and every heartbeat. Pray, pray, bless him for the blessings that are within me. We sing the song, there shall be showers of blessing. Do, do we really mean it? I mean, when we focus on all that God gives us, we are so fortunate to be Americans, to be saved. And then thirdly, we can bless him for all his benefits. Verse number 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. We're living in a day and age and a culture where a lot of people take a job just for the benefits. The salary is secondary. The benefits are more important. For example, medical insurance. I have a lot of preacher friends that they'll just take a job so that they can have medical insurance. Because if you go to the hospital, it's expensive. In case you haven't been there lately, if you don't have insurance, you'll find out just how expensive it is. It's very expensive. Uh, praise the Lord, we have the insurance that we need as a family, but there are a lot of families that can't afford insurance. And so they're stuck without. But uh, I, I, when I came on board here, there were some benefits that came with serving here. And uh, you people are one of the benefits. I get to have your friendship, and you get to have my friendship. And if you don't like me, get over it, okay? <laughs> but that's a benefit. Uh, and the benefit is a... I don't have a real rigid schedule. Uh, I've, I'm given liberty and 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 uh, given freedom to uh, witness. Uh, you know, I, if I want to witness on Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, I can. But um, that's why I came here to help with those kinds of things. So I appreciate the benefits of this job and the and the privileges of being able to preach. Somebody asked me after I retired. They said, "What do you miss most about being a pastor?" And I said, "Well, three things I miss." Number one, I miss being called pastor. You know, when you've been a pastor for 40 years and everybody calls you pastor, and then all of a sudden you're not a pastor anymore, you go out there and everybody does, nobody calls you pastor anymore. You miss that because it's, it's, it's an honorable title, and you kind of miss that. And then I miss the pulpit because I love to teach. I don't teach as good as other preachers probably teach, but, you know, I've, I've been a teacher and a preacher most of my life, and, and I miss being able to... To, I missed that. And so that's why I entered back into the ministry. As if you notice, these are alliterated, okay? The, uh, the pastoral title, the pulpit, and, and the third one is the paycheck. <laughs> I like to be honest with people. Yeah, I miss the paycheck. Because the more, the more I earn, the more I can give. That's fundamentally why I appreciate a paycheck, because it allows me to give so much more than if I didn't have a paycheck. So uh, those are the three things. But those, those are benefits. And uh, you have benefits for where you work. You have benefits in where you live. And we can praise the Lord for that. Praise Him for saving our soul, letter A. We can bless Him or praise Him because of the blessings that are within us. And then we can bless Him for His benefits. Let's go to the major needs here, the bulk of this little challenge. Five major needs of the human heart for assurance, for you and I appreciating the divine benefits and having assurance. We sing the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Uh, assurance is better than insurance because with insurance, you have to pay the premiums. With assurance, he's already paid the premiums. 
See? And so, to me, in fact, if you're witnessing and you go up to somebody and you say, I'd like to talk to you about insurance. If you say that really fast, he thinks you're selling insurance, but really you're talking to him about blessed assurance, okay? Jesus is mine. So uh, assurance is, is a much better word. Five needs of the human heart for insurance. First one, letter A. It's the first part of verse number three. It's forgiveness. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, verse three says. And that is divine help. Medical doctors claim that uh, unforgiveness Unforgiveness is a stress that is cancer-inducing. And I believe that. I, I really believe if we live in an unforgiving type of a life, if, we, if there are people that we won't forgive, you're, you're inviting cancer toxins into your system. I can't prove that. I'm not a doctor. But aren't you glad that God forgave you? All He forgiveth all our iniquities. If he granted you forgiveness, we ought to grant others forgiveness. And we need to remember that. Divine help from him. And then as we translate the message of Christ to other people, one of the best ways to do that is to have a forgiving spirit and forgive those that have hurt us and forgive those that have um, been a challenge in our life. And I was talking to somebody the other day about forgiveness and how important it is to, in faith sometimes, just tell people you forgive them. It's very important. The Lord forgives us. We ought to forgive others. That's divine help. Let her be who healeth all our diseases. Now, this isn't so much a medical thing as it is a heart thing. It's divine healing, and it's divine healing of the heart. Sometimes we have a disease that's medical and we don't get over it, but we can still have our heart filled with a divine healing because the Lord healeth us of all thy diseases. That's the second benefit. The first benefit is forgiveness, and the second one is a healing, a divine healing. Uh, the reason so many believers love the Psalms is because as you read the Psalms, you realize that God hears you. And you realize that God wants to help you. And we realize that God wants to restore our hope. And we can get our heart healed once we see these things synergized and brought together in our life. There's healing and there's help and there's hope. They're given to us as we read the scriptures. So the first divine uh, benefit is help. And the second one is healing. Because he healeth all the disease. The third one is redeemeth thy life. Look at verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? He redeems us. That's divine hope. We sing the song sometimes, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And these other religions that are believing in works, they're saying Jesus didn't pay it all. But he did. He paid it all. He paid our way, paved our way. He paid for our way into heaven with his blood. We ought to be thankful for that. Um, somebody I knew one time was supposed to go to jail, and he, he couldn't get out of jail because he didn't have any money. And uh, one of his friends or relatives came along and paid his way. And he said, Judge, I have confidence in this fellow. I'm going to pay his way so he can have his freedom. And Jesus did that for us. He redeemed our whole life. And he paid it all that we might have the benefit of living for him. So he, in verse number three, he forgiveth all thy iniquities. He healeth all their diseases. In verse four, he redeemeth thy life from destruction. And then it says, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. So that's letter D. Who crowneth thee. And then right below that, number one, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, number two. And that's divine honor. You know, when I was a kid, when my dad crowned me, it wasn't divine honor. He was hitting me because I was misbehaving. You know, he just whacked me on the back or whacked me on the head, in love, of course. 
But there's, there's a crowning that's going to take place. You and I go to heaven, all those crowns of faithfulness and righteousness that we have earned as we've appreciated all that God does for us. You know, we, we earn crowns not to boast on ourselves, but we don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. Must I go on empty-handed, the songwriter says. So that crown of righteousness or that crown of faithfulness that we, that we earn and win on earth, we lay at the feet of Jesus when we get to heaven. And some people have never been faithful and, they've, and they don't live right. And they never give and they never pray and they never read their Bible. They will have nothing to lay at the feet of Jesus if they make it. So it's amazing how He crowneth us. And, and that the two characteristics there are kindness and mercies. And you know, that's what we ought to reflect to our neighbors and to our co-workers and to our fellow man. We should be kind and we should be full of tender mercies. Not wimps and not... and not. Uh, I can never think of the words I need right at the moment. But we don't want to be, we, we don't want to be effeminate. But we can be kind without being considered effeminate. And we can be tender without being effeminate. We can be tough and tender. Tender first and then tough. And I believe that pleases the Lord. And He crowns us with that, that divine honor. So forgiveness is divine help. Healing is divine healing. Redemption is divine hope. Crowneth is divine honor. Now look at the last one here. Who satisfieth, verse 5, who satisfieth thy mouth. He's going to help us with our speech, okay? He satisfies our mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So letter E, he satisfieth thy mouth with good things. That's divine happiness. Divine happiness. Divine help, first benefit. Divine healing, divine hope, divine honor. And then letter E, divine happiness. We sing the joy of the Lord is our strength. He becomes our strength. And He also becomes the readiness for you and I to give answers to other people. I think it's 1 Peter 3.15. We are to be ready always to give an answer when somebody else asks us about our faith. You know, if, if, you're, if you're not depressed and grieved and full of sorrow, but you have a joyful countenance in a tragedy, people are going to ask you, where does it come from? I mean, your house burned down. How can you praise the Lord? Well, that's the joy of the Lord. That's our strength. That's, that's the part that God gives us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so that's why it's so important that we, like the little cartoon you have, that's why it's, it's so important that we deal in sunshine more than peddling clouds. And sometimes we just have tough, tough days and we, we get depressed and we get discouraged, but we should keep that at home. You know what I'm saying? Maybe keep that in your closet. But if you really love the Lord, if you're really looking forward to His rapture, if you're really looking forward to singing His great hymns, if you're really looking forward to uh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, if you're looking forward to all that, then we should be joyful. And uh, we shouldn't have to hide that. And we should be ready with an answer. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. We, we should always have good answers when people ask us about our Savior, when they ask us about our faith. In conclusion, how many love that word? Amen. In conclusion, okay. Thus, uh, so that as a child, as a recipient of these benefits, thy youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the last part of verse number 5. And if you want to put, I think it's Isaiah 41. You can check that out later when you get home. But this becomes His divine plan for our life. And if you go to 3 John chapter 2, we'll read that as we wrap this all up here. 3 John, that, those real little tiny books right before Revelation. Actually, right before Jude, we find 3 John and verse number 2. Now, we realize that this is an epistle of John, but one thing I learned early in my Christian life is this is the Word of God, and it's the Spirit of God that gave it to John to write. 
And it's the Spirit of God that gives it to us. This is what Jesus wants of us. And John incorporates that in this, in this letter. The elder whom, the elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth, he says in verse one and then two, beloved, that's anybody that's a believer, Christian, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And there's much in the Bible about prosperity. And uh, the Lord wants us to be prosperous in our health. With these benefits, we can have that. The Lord wants us to be prosperous in our walk. He wants us to be prosperous in our wealth. He doesn't want us to fail and be miserable. He wants us to enjoy the benefits that come with being a believer. And these are echoed, I believe, all throughout the New Testament. These benefits of divine help, divine healing, divine hope, divine honor, and divine happiness. All these benefits are part of God's plan. These benefits confirm our prosperity in Christ. We are prosperous because of Jesus. We are rejoicing in the prosperity that he has and he shares with us. We're an inheritor of all that. I've always said, you know, people say, what are you gonna, what's the first thing you're going to say when you get to heaven? I've already got it figured out. First thing I say when I'm going to get to heaven is, wow. <laughs> That's real deep, isn't it? But I think, I think we're all going to say, wow. Because we're going to say, man, if I would have known, if I would have known all that you have for me, uh, it would it would have changed my life. And uh, one day we're going to see all that. So hopefully this challenge is helpful to you. It's a phenomenal psalm, I think. Psalm 103. There's a lot more in it, but uh, those are just the first five verses. Did I give you all the blanks? Did I miss any? Anybody want to make a closing comment here? There, I don't want to let you out six minutes early because if I do that, I'll probably hear about it tomorrow, okay? All right, you ready to go home? Okay, stand up. We'll have a word of prayer and we'll let you go. You glad you